Good morning. Welcome to worship today on the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. Welcome to those of you who are here today and those who are gathered um, online. Uh, it's also our joy to welcome Carol Dixon to our organ bench today. Carol is um, a member of our congregation, but you may not be familiar seeing her around here because up until recently she served, uh, she's recently retired from Trinity Episcopal Church in Melrose where she was been their organist and choir master for many years. Uh, it's our joy to welcome her, her here today as David and Jill are on a much deserved vacation. Um, the worship service is printed out for you in the bulletin. Um, those of you who are gathered at home, if you hear a, a sound, we have the fans on full blast here because it's going to be close to 90 degrees, so please pardon that if you hear that on the recording. I invite you to rise in body or spirit as we begin our worship. We begin our prayer this morning as we live each day of our lives in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us confess our sins against God and one another. Before God, who knows me completely, and with you, my brothers and sisters, I admit to my own brokenness, to the ways I hurt my own life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. I repent of my false judgments and unkind words. May God forgive me, Christ renew me, and the Spirit help me grow in love. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent the Son to be our Savior, forgive you your sins and give you the courage and strength to serve God in the world through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
the grace of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forever. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from the book of Lamentations, the third chapter. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Mercies of God never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, in the Lord I will hope. The Lord is good to those who are patient, to the soul that seeks after God. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a warrior to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put his mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope, to give his cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although causing grief, the Lord will have compassion out of an abundance of steadfast love. For the Lord does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I, I, 
reading from the second letter of Paul to the church in Corinth. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete e eagerness in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I am not condemning you, but I want to te test the sincerity of your love by comparing it with the eagerness of others. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through the poverty could become rich. And here in my judgment about what is best for you in this matter. Last year you were the first not only to give, but also the first to have the desire to do so. Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your com completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Our desire is not that others might be relieved while you hard pressed, but that there might be equality. At the present time, your plenty will supply what they need so that in turn, their plenty will supply what you need. The goal is equality, as it is written. The one who gathers much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. 
Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now, there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched my clothes? He looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement, and he strictly ordered them to tell no one about this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite the children who are gathered at home to gather around the TV or the iPad, wherever you are. I know some of you are camping this week and maybe watching this from someplace out in the woods. So I want to talk to you this morning about a certain kind of prayer that we call lament. If you noticed when Mr. Dixon was reading our first reading, he said it was from the book of Lamentations, which comes from the word lament. Now, what is a lament? You know, sometimes when we pray to God, we have happy thoughts, right? We give thanks to God for all of God's blessings. We may ask God for something, maybe for God to keep us safe or to be with someone. We may simply praise God for being God and for being so good and gracious. But there are times also when we come before God and we're not feeling so great. And we may just need time to pour out our hearts before God and to tell God how we're feeling. And sometimes those feelings are sadness or anger or just feeling depressed. And we call that a lament. That's not the same thing as just whining or complaining, right? We, we sometimes we do that too, where, you know, we didn't have the perfect day, so oh, I don't want this for dinner, or I don't want to do my homework. This isn't that so much. It's when you have that sick feeling inside and you just need to talk about it with someone. You can come to God with a lament. We have lots of examples of that in the Bible. We heard one of them this morning. But in the book of the Psalms, there are tons of these laments where someone just says, God, nothing feels right right now. My life isn't the way I want it to be. People I know are hurting. I don't know what to do next. Please help me. And God hears those prayers. Those prayers are precious to God. God, does, as you heard, does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. God does not want us to be in that place all by ourselves. So when you feel that way, I want you to know that you can come before God with that, or any of us. You can, you can bring those fears and sadnesses to God and know 
that God holds them close to his heart. And God is with you in those dark times. And as we sang in the psalm, even if the night is full of sadness, joy comes in the morning. So let us pray. God, we give you thanks that we can come before you with anything at all, even our laments, and that you hear us and you promise to be with us. Bless our children wherever they may be this day, and turn all of our mourning into dancing. Amen. Thank you. I'm going to read a little bit from that first reading again. The Lord is good to those who are patient, to the soul that seeks after God. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a warrior to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put his mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope. That last bit, you may have noticed in your bulletin this morning, is in parentheses. There may yet be hope. It's almost as if the writer scribbled it in the margins of his manuscript, as if to remind himself, as he's writing this heartfelt and heartbreaking lament, that in the end there is still God. That as dark as the night may feel, there is always the morning. We don't often get parentheses in the Bible, or any punctuation in, is rare in the ancient Hebrew language of the Old Testament. And so my eyes have sort of been fixated on this little phrase this week, there may yet be hope, something that feels deeply authentic to me, and even now in our own day as we look out upon the world. With all of you, I watched with horror this week the footage of that high-rise apartment building in Florida where dozens of people are trapped or otherwise unaccounted for. It's but the latest example of what feels like needless death, suffering with no redemptive purpose, the kind of thing that inspires these biblical lamentations. You could say similar things about the plague of gun violence in our country or people who succumb to illness or injury simply because they cannot afford health care, or our intractable and utterly dysfunctional politics which puts winning and losing over the common good time and time again. Do you ever feel what the psalmist is feeling? That things will never change? That something in your life, or maybe even life itself, is irretrievably broken. We all go through these periods of life sometimes. You can call it depression, or a dark night of the soul, or simply a night with no sleep. I've had such times. I've walked with friends through such times, where it seems like the best we can muster in terms of our faith is that little phrase in parentheses, there may yet be hope. It's certainly the place that both of the people in our gospel today found themselves. A girl only 12 years old, we might say in the sixth grade, is on her deathbed, stricken with an illness that no one her age should have to even think about, much less endure. We know stories like this. We tremble to speak about them. Whether these kids belong to our families or to someone we know, they fill us with a combination of sadness and rage at the universe for allowing something so unfair. And then there's the woman, bent over in pain with a hemorrhage for as long as that girl has been alive, 12 years, pain and embarrassment her only companion along with exclusion from her religious community because according to the ancient purity laws, a woman who was bleeding from where she was bleeding was considered unclean. No one could touch her and she could touch no one without them becoming unclean as well. 
How intimately did she know the language of lament, of crying out to God, of waiting through what probably only felt like years of silence? These are desperate situations, both of them. Different in some ways, but in no ways that really matter in the end, because no one could seem to help. Hope seemed like nothing more than a footnote, a maybe, something that on the good days you could hold on to. It is into this headspace and heart space that both of these people encounter Jesus. Maybe you've been in this place before, and maybe you're even there right now. What is it that you need from Jesus today? What is it that you want to say to him? What is it that you want him to know or to do? Might you be like the dad in this story and desperately want to seek him out and beg that he come to your home? Might you be like the woman and break all social and religious protocol just to get his attention. We don't use the language of begging much anymore in our prayers, just as our society often frowns upon the idea of beggars. People should take care of themselves, we say. They should make better decisions. They should use the social safety nets that are in place and not make people uncomfortable on the street. If only we could know what it's like to be in their shoes. But begging is actually pretty common in the Bible. It's what you do when there's nothing else you can do. Martin Luther's last words on his deathbed were, we, that is all of us, are beggars. This is true. And Jesus never turns beggars away, even when he could have. These two episodes, after all, interrupt each other in Mark's gospel. It isn't that the one flows neatly into the next, but that both are demanding Jesus' attention at the same time, as Mark so often likes to say, immediately. Like so many situations in our world, it feels like God cannot be in two places at once, that we must ask, who is more worthy? Who is more in need? Who in the triage of human suffering makes it ever so slightly to the top of the list? Our politics force us to make this false choice all the time. Do we save the planet from a climate crisis or do we save the economy and jobs? Do we fix our crumbling roads and bridges or do we lower taxes? But God's grace and healing are not a zero-sum game where there is a fixed amount, where if some people, particularly so-called unworthy people, get more, or even some, then others will have less. That is what these stories are really about. These are stories of the abundance of God's heart, of how God's heart doesn't work like human hearts or bank accounts, which sometimes do run out and go into the red. God's heart can only give more love, more compassion, more justice for the oppressed. The woman who interrupts Jesus, she gets a full dose, as it were, of his healing power. He feels it come out of him, she can feel it come into her. And that ought to be the end of it, right? Jesus has done his good deed for the day, and he can go home. But Jesus keeps going. He keeps going on to Jairus' house where his daughter who was sick has in fact now died and by the looks of it has proven that false narrative to be true, that there was only so much love to go around. People are laughing even that dad has even bothered to bring Jesus there. But to those people, to that attitude, to that way of being in the world, Jesus says, do not fear, only believe. And he takes the girl by the hand and says to her, little girl, get up. And the little girl got up. Do you see what's happening here? Do you see what is the real miracle in these stories? Yes, Jesus is a healer. Yes, God has power over life and death. But more than that, more than that, God has enough of that power for everyone. God does not play favorites. 
God does not make decisions about who gets to experience kindness and justice today, and everyone else has to wait until later. And that, beloved, is, is why there may yet be hope, even now, even in our darkest night. As the lamenter said in our first reading today, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. New every morning, maybe even every minute, every moment. Maybe that is what it actually means to be God, not a dispenser of heavenly favors for those who ask the hardest, but an inexhaustible fount of mercy, of love, of healing that never fails, never runs out, never gives up. Today, he meets each one of us as we run out to touch his garment, but not only his garment does he give us, but his very body and blood, his life, and we feel his power coming into us, into our bodies, healing us not only of our fear, but of our isolation, our feelings of unworthiness and shame, our belief that we are somehow unclean. With the little girl, God raises our bodies and our spirits, even when they feel all but dead to a new future. Such is the love that embraces us this day, the love that is placed into our hands, which flows from Jesus' risen body into ours. It has no limit, no restrictions, no red tape. It is not bound by our miserly attempts to manage it or divide it up, like the sun rising in the morning. It is just there, giving light and life to everyone and everything it touches, no parentheses needed. And whether you are Jairus or his daughter or the woman bent over, or whether you bring your own story today, there is mercy enough for you. There is a place at this table. There is for you healing and salvation and maybe, no, Definitely, real hope. Oh Lord, great is your faithfulness. Amen.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this morning, we pray for Jeanette, Jack King's mother, who entered hospice care this week. She had had uh, um, colon cancer for uh, some time, and uh, she is now being cared for to be as comfortable as possible. So we commend her into the loving mercy and care of our God and for Jack and all of his siblings as they prepare to hand her over to God. We pray also for Jerry Stafford who is in the hospital today with um, elevated blood pressure and hope um, that she gets to go home very soon. Here at the end of June, let us pray for the needs of the world Responding to each petition with an echo of today's psalm, we cry out to you. O oh God, for the church around the world we pray, for congregations without pastoral leadership, for troubled denominations, for Christians facing persecution, and for our own assembly. Mighty God, we cry out to you. For your earth, we pray, for land suffering under excessive heat, for waters rising along coastlines, for animals deprived of habitats, and for our own green spaces. Benevolent God, we, we cry out to you. For the nations, we pray, that governments learn the ways of peace and cooperation, that the poor receive food and shelter and respect, that gun violence and all prejudices come to an end. Righteous God, we cry out to you. For the hungry, for the hungry we pray, for starving children, for relief agencies, for the end to famine, and for an in increase in generosity among us all. Merciful God, we cry out to you. For the sick and afflicted we pray, for children who are, are at the point of death, for women who endure hemorrhaging, for persons who receive no relief from physicians, for those who perished in the building collapse in Florida this week, and for all who mourn. Compassionate God, out to you. We give thanks to, for all the faithful who have lived and died in the faith, especially Cyril of Alexandria, and all theologians whose ministry has shaped the church. And we pray that all at the end, all your people will meet in the joy of your presence. Eternal God, we cry out to you. Into your hands today and forever, we commit for all whom we pray, trusting in the grace made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with each other a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all 
the ends of earth, be gathered into one in you. As this cup of blessing is shared within our midst, may we share the presence of your love. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become our bread, so may all your people from all the ends of Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hill, were gathered into one to become a So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Please rise. Let us pray. God of glory, Receive these gifts and the offering of our lives. Draw us to your heart in the midst of this world that all creation may be brought from bondage to freedom, from darkness to light, and from death to life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, you we praise and glorify, you we worship and adore. You formed the earth from chaos, you encircled the globe with air, you created fire for warmth and light, you nourished the lands with water. You molded us in your image. And with mercy higher than the mountains, with grace deeper than the seas, you blessed the Israelites and cherished them as your own. That also we, estranged and dying, might be adopted to live in your spirit, you called to us through the life and death of Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together as the body of Christ, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come, come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your Son, the firstborn of your new creation. We remember his life lived for others and his death and resurrection, which renews the face of the earth. We await his coming when, with the world made perfect through your wisdom, all our sins and sorrows will be no more. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, holy and merciful one, holy and compassionate, send upon us and this meal your Holy Spirit, whose breath revives us for life, whose fire rouses us to love. Enfold in your arms all who share this holy food. Nurture in us the fruits of the Spirit, that we may be a living tree, sharing your bounty with all the world. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy and benevolent God, receive our praise and petitions as Jesus received the cry of the needy, and fill us with your blessing. Until needy no longer and bound to you in love, we feast forever in the triumph of the Lamb. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, O God, now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive what you are, the body of Christ. May we become what we receive. The ushers will guide you forward for Holy Communion. We'll receive at the foot of the steps, and then please place your cup into the tray. Lamb of God.
Please rise. Let us pray. Gracious God, in this meal you have drawn us to your heart and nourished us at your table with food and drink, the body and blood of Christ. Now send us, send us forth to be your people in the world and to proclaim your truth this day and evermore. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy Eternal Majesty, Holy Incarnate Word, Holy Abiding Spirit, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. once again to worship this morning and welcome once again to Carol Dixon thank you for being with us today you may not know this it is really hard to find good accompanists um, and, and so it makes it hard for David to get away and so we're so grateful that uh, Carol can now be with us on a on a more regular basis as our substitute uh, when Dave is away thank you for sharing your gift of music with us um, also you this has been uh, in the email if you're on Facebook but if you're not Calumet is having a, a major fundraiser called Walk the Walk, where all you have to do is sign up, and, and if people in congregations walk a certain number of miles, a donor is going to give like $38,000 to Calumet, up to like $100,000. So we're having a walking team here at FLC. You don't have to walk together, but we can. And if you sign up on their website, you get a t-shirt, or your dog can even sign up and get a bandana and you just track your miles and say you're part of First Lutheran Church, and hopefully if um, enough people do this, uh, camp will get a great uh, big donation. So you can read more about that in your bulletin and on the link. And I am gonna invite John, our council president, to come forward and say just a word about our boiler fundraiser. If you could use the microphone for the people at home, that would be great, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Just a quick update on the boiler replacement project. Uh, as council president, I, I signed the contract and returned it to the contractor. Hey. I'm, I, I'm a little nervous about that because I did sign my real name. <laughs> and so he has it. We're being scheduled for later in the summer. 
and we've begun the fundraising aspect of this project. Thank you to everyone who's already returned a pledge or, or, or a donation. And those who haven't, I'm asking you to do it as, as soon as you can. Um, and while you're thinking about it and, and praying about it, please be as generous as possible. It's a very expensive undertaking, and we're very far from our goal. So anything everyone can do, please, pl please reach as deep as you can. And uh, I appreciate that. We all do. Of course, I picked the hottest day in, in weeks to talk about the boiler. But uh, we're going to get this done one way or another. Uh, and we'll be updating you over the course of the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone wants to donate air conditioning, we'll accept that too. But that's, a, you know, that's not in the pro plans for right now. <laughs> our worship has ended. Our service in the world begins. Go in peace and glorify the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God.